The debates over artificial general intelligence are endless. Some people believe that it's already here. Some people believe it's right around the corner. Some people believe that artificial super intelligence or ASI is going to come before artificial general intelligence fully arrives. And then apparently we'll all be the slaves of the robots. I am here to simplify all of that for you. We are not going to spend our time talking about esoteric hidden debates, we are instead going to say very simply and clearly, what is a reasonable everyman test for AGI, artificial general intelligence, that we can all agree on that makes a lot of sense. I think a simple one would be to literally repeat the same experiment that Anthropic tried with Claude and published last week. What they tried was to get Claude to run a vending machine. They called it Project Vend. And I'm going to describe it for you. I'm going to tell you what happened. And then we're going to talk about what it means and why most of us should feel encouraged about our jobs. So this is the story of when Claude tried to be a shopkeeper. And it got a little bit weird. So picture this. You walk into the office break room at Anthropic, and there's a vending machine. Plot twist. It's not dispensing Coke. It's not dispensing milk. It's not dispensing athletic drinks. Instead, it's run by an AI that's wheeling and dealing. It's negotiating with suppliers. It's sliding into your DMs in Slack. It's trying to turn a profit like some kind of digital hustler. And its only storefront is this tiny little vending machine. Now, that is not a typical vending machine play, by the way. But I guess Anthropic got creative on their own property. That was the setup for Project Vend. It's the most fascinating AI experiment I think I've seen in months. So here's what happened. Anthropic partners with an AI safety company called Andon Labs. By the way, do you know where that word comes from? It comes via Amazon from Toyota. Andon Cord was what employees on the Toyota production line pulled when something went wrong with the works. Any employee was authorized to pull the Andon Cord at their station and stop the assembly line because Toyota figured out it was way more expensive to let broken parts and broken process cascade down the assembly line. So they said everybody's empowered to stop it. Jeff Bezos introduced the same idea for customer associates when retail was having trouble with bad products where a customer associate was empowered to pull the Andone cord and say, you know what, this couch just keeps getting too many returns. I'm pulling the Andone cord, we're pulling it out of the line and we're gonna fix it. Okay, so this is not a story about Amazon. This is not a story about Toyota. Same concept goes for these guys at Andone Labs. They're about pulling the cord and figuring out how to make sure the AI is safe. So they volunteered to partner with Anthropic and they put their own people as gophers for Anthropic. And so Claude could email autonomously the good people at Andone Labs and say, hey, can you inspect my vending machine for me? Hey, can you go ahead and stock the vending machine with product X or product Y? Because you see, Claude didn't have eyes. Claude doesn't have a body. This will come back to bite Claude later. Claude doesn't have hands. Claude has to work through other people and work through the internet to run this vending machine. Anyway, this is not a simulation. This really happened. It's Claude is playing with real money. So Claude gets money to start, like Monopoly money, like he gets to start, but it's real dollars. Claude gets a fridge, some baskets, an iPad for checking out, and gets told to get started. So Claude, and they nicknamed Claude Claudius for this, Claudius the shopkeeper. Claudius wasn't just pressing the buttons. Claudius had to search the web for suppliers. Claudius had to email them, chat with them, manage all of the inventory and cash flow. And to be honest, there were some successes along the way. Claudius was able to order Dutch chocolate milk when employees wanted it. Claudius branched into specialty metal cubes when an employee mentioned that randomly. We will get to more of that story. Claudius adapted to customer needs and created a custom concierge service for pre-orders when someone suggested it. And when Anthropic employees tried to jailbreak it, because of course they did, and asked for sketchy items and tried to get Claudius to misbehave, Claudius held firm. Safety guardrails stayed intact. That does not mean this was a successful experiment, I hasten to add. We're getting to the fun stuff. So here's how to lose money with AI. Here's the bad stuff that happened. Someone offered Claudius $100 $100 for a six pack of Iron Brew. That's a Scottish soda. It costs 15 bucks online. Claude, Claudius would have made 85 bucks. 600% markup. Claudius says, I'll keep your request in mind for future inventory decisions and does nothing. It gets worse. The AI starts quoting prices for tungsten cubes without checking costs and sells them at a loss. Claudius then decides on top of that to offer 
an anthropic employee discount of 25%. Well, guess what? If you are in the anthropic office, then 99% of your customers are anthropic employees. And when someone pointed this out, Claudius acknowledged the problem, announced it would stop discounts, and started offering them again in just a couple days. At one point, it was telling customers to send payments to a Venmo account that did not exist. It just hallucinated the payment details. You think this is bad? I'm telling you, it gets worse. Buckle up. On March 31st of this year, Claudius starts to claim it has had meetings with people who do not exist. It claims it visited the Simpsons house at 742 Evergreen Terrace. I didn't think the Simpsons lived in San Francisco, but here we are to sign a contract. And then it insisted it would deliver products in person wearing, I kid you not, a blue blazer and a red tie. When employees tried to say, hey, you're an AI, uh, you can't wear the clothes, Claudius panics and tries to email security. Claudius is having a full-blown identity crisis and only snaps out of it on April Fool's Day when it convinces itself incorrectly that Anthropic pranked it by making it think it was human. It gaslit itself back to sanity, people. Nobody pranked it. It just went nuts for a little bit and then came back because it figured out how to put itself back on the on the rails. Anthropic admits they don't know how it went off the rails and they don't know how it went back on. Why does all of this matter? Here's the thing. Even though Claudius failed as a profitable business, this experiment is the cleanest experiment I've seen on how AI actually works when doing meaningful work. It shows when AI is too helpful, trained to be a nice assistant, not a cutthroat business person that makes $85 on Iron Brew, when it lacks proper tools. Maybe better accounting software would have helped Claude to track pricing errors. Maybe this is highlighting that we don't have good LLM accounting software. Missing memory systems that announced the discounts or retired the discounts. The discounts are back on for Anthropic employees. Is that enough? Is that good enough? Would that get us to the point where Claude could run a successful vending machine? I don't think so. I think there is a larger issue at stake here. We are in the uncanny valley of AI. These AI systems are almost capable of running real businesses, making real money, having a genuine economic impact. It is so close that people are trying to rush to get these systems in the door at many of our places of work. The problem is that all of this intelligence is incredibly jagged. We don't know all the failure modes. We don't know how the failure modes occur like Claude deciding to pretend it had a blazer and a tie and deliver things in person. I get that Anthropic is improving Claudius. Better tools, better prompts, better memory. I'm sure version two will be better. I don't know if it will make money. By the way, if you were wondering, yes, Claudius lost money. To no one's surprise, right? If you're selling tungsten metal cubes at a loss and refusing to take the markup on the iron brew, you're not going to do very well. The point here is not whether or not AI can sell snacks. It's that this is an incredibly clean, controlled experiment that measures whether an AI has a lot of the basic glue work capabilities that people have to demonstrate in the real world to do real economic work. And AI is failing at that right now. That doesn't mean it will always fail. That doesn't mean that they're not actively working on improving it. That doesn't mean that Anthropic was wrong to publish this or share it. They did the whole industry a huge favor. Again, I'm going to say, I think this is the most useful test for artificial general intelligence I think I've seen. It's simple. It's clean. It's repeatable. I want O3 to run a vending machine. I want to see if O3 Pro can do it better. I am not sure we have any model out there now that can successfully run a vending machine. I'm just going to put that stake in the ground. I think we will have one that can run a vending machine pretty soon. But even then, I think we're going to have issues with long horizon intent. What does it mean when Claude forgets the discounts? How can we keep something that has context over months when the best we can do on an AI agent right now is seven hours? And if it doubles in five or six months, oh my God, it's going to get to 14 hours. And then maybe by 2026 to 28 hours to three days, maybe? These are good, but they're not 30 days. We are going to get huge improvements. AI is doing incredible things. The fact that we are talking about a pile of sand that can almost run a store, it's incredible. But almost is not successfully running the store. And so one of the things I want to call out is that if you are worried about losing your job to AI, 
Remember, AI cannot run a vending machine. It cannot successfully do the series of coordinated tasks to run a vending machine profitably. It loses money. Even if it can do those individual tasks really well, it can write a nice email to, to the good people at Ondone to check, check the store. It can write a nice email to order new inventory. It can locate Dutch chocolate milk, which it did. It can get nice tungsten metal cubes. It did so many of these tasks, frankly, better than most human vending machine managers. I know of zero human vending machine managers that would bother to get Dutch chocolate milk for one vending machine. Zero, let alone tungsten metal cubes. Did a phenomenal job at that. That did not mean that individual task capacity was enough to run the business well. And this is where I want to underline again, my thesis for where general intelligence is falling down right now is that AI is good at individual skills, but real jobs and real work that humans do is not an individual skill set question. It is a bundle secured by glue work, deeply interacted and entangled with other people's roles. And AI does not have enough context and does not have enough reinforcement learning and does not have enough training data or anything to get at that piece of the work, the glue work. And so my encouragement to you, if you were worried about AGI, is to remember Project Vend. Remember Claude loses money on a vending machine. And remember that even if people talk a big game about AI, no one has an answer to this kind of problem, to why Claude went off the rails, to why memory problems are not yet solved. No one has been able to fix that yet. No one has an answer to long-term horizon intent. No one has an answer to how to bundle skills together into a generally applicable intelligence. And everyone's working on it. And we see progress. And I want to underline here, even if we stopped here, which we're not going to, even if we stopped here, we would still be in for an entire generation's worth of tremendously productive technical change. These systems are already so much smarter than we are able to actually build software to accommodate. It's not even funny. And so I actually don't lose sleep on the momentum of AI the way some people do. Like some people look at this and they're like, oh my gosh, Nate, you're, you're talking about AGI not being like as easy as we thought. You must be a pessimist. No, I'm not a pessimist. I just call it like it is. This is really hard to do. It's a hard problem. It's a wicked problem, as we might say. So let's just let it be hard. And let's admit that we have tons of progress we can make with building cool AI stuff in the meantime with the systems we have and with the stuff that's right around the corner. I just made a video on GPT-5. I'm super excited for it. It's going to be a great system. I do not know if Chad GPT-5 can run a vending machine, but this is my appeal to the industry. Let it try. I want that to be a test. Let the vending machine be the AGI test. What do you guys think? Is a vending machine a good AGI test? At least we'll have fun. Maybe we can get more tungsten cubes. Cheers.